In the last video we added some currency to our game and we are able to set that currency when the game starts but as of right now we are able to build any amount of towers without reducing the currency and these towers don't even have a price as you can see there are some yellow areas here and these yellow areas are actually for writing the prices. So we will have to add some text to these um, so if you go to your scene and find your um, canvas and find your tower panel then we'll have to add some text to all these buttons here so we can actually just right click on the storm tower and go to UI and select text and this text will be the price on this tower so we can just rename the text to price so um, this text will be placed in the yellow area so you can just take the text and move it to the yellow area, area here and make sure that the size of this box here fits the inner size of the yellow area i'm going to zoom in in a minute here we go so as you can see that this should just go to the edges of the yellow area so the text will not go over it so this is the text so far and um, we will have to write a price let's say just for fun this one is two dollars and we will write this from a script <laughs> if i could hit my dollar there we go um, we will write this from a script, but this just uh, I'm just writing some text here so that I have something to look at when I'm adjusting everything to make it look exactly as I want it to. First of all, we would like to use another font. We would like to use the same font as we used before, before that Carter one. And what did I just do? Let's see here. Yeah, we have Carter one, and I guess it's because of the size of that one. It looks differently. So we take Carter one. Now my text disappeared because apparently the settings up here doesn't fit with whatever I have here. Anyway, um, we are leaving this with 14 and we have line spacing 1. It's totally fine. We would like to send our text and we would like to send it also um, uh, vertically. Besides that, we are going to click best fit. So when you write best fit, it should be showing up. The text should be showing up again inside the yellow box here. And then we have to set the sizes of the text. So basically, you can just put the max size as high as you can. That's 300. That's the maximum. Um, and then we have to say horizontal overflow. That's warp, uh, wrap, and vertical overflow. That's also set correctly. Okay, so right now, we can't see the text. Um, let's try to put it a little lower than 300. Let's see what can we do. Let's say yeah, 300 should work, though. I don't know why it's like this um, ugly here. Let's try to change the color, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, my Unity is rendering something wrong uh, because when I set it to 300, I wasn't able to see anything here. But when I changed the color right away, I was able to see it again. So apparently, there was something with the rendering. If you had the same problem, don't worry. Just do the same as me. Change the color, and then maybe it might show. It will show up again. I also noticed it was flickering with the five out here when I changed the text here and it shouldn't interfere with this so apparently there was some error anyway I'm going to leave it with the two dollars here and as you can see it's very blurry um, but it's not going to be that in game it's just when you zoom in on the text it, it has these rough edges here and um, you could scale it differently and everything uh, to make it non blurry but it actually looks worse in the game then so basically just leave it with minimum size of one for example and maximum size 300 and yeah, the font size I don't know we can keep it at 14 I guess now it does that thing in where it blurs it out I don't know why anyway uh, font style I'm going to put it as bold and uh, what else what else I would like to add some outline to it so you can click add component and then write out and then there's going to come um, outline up here and I'm just going to move this up so you can see it. Then we have our outline, and we just need to keep that on 1 and minus 1, I guess. Yeah. Besides that, I would also like to add a shadow. So you just write shadow and pop that out in there. So we have a shadow here, and you just keep that in 1 and minus 1 as well. Now you have your text out here. Um, what else? So if we play the game in maximized now you'll see that the text is actually more readable than it is when you zoom totally in. But I still think it's actually quite small though. So let's try to make it a little larger. You can select the 
price then maybe move this one a little up a little more up and move these over the edges here yeah, as long as the center is not going to go over the edges so i guess that's okay with the size don't think this will change anything nope yeah so you can just make the box a little larger if you want to because i think if you make this scale larger <coughs> sorry if you make that scale larger then it's going to be more blurry so just keep the scale at a maximum one uh, in x and maximum one in y here <coughs> okay so let's try to play it again let's see yeah this looks a lot better so just make the box with the price the same size as the gray area instead of the yellow area if you want it a little larger here and then keep yeah the values um like this so you have uh, 300 max size and one minimum size then 300 is the maximum at all so it fits your screen uh, resolution anyway that was the price for that one now we just need to move it to the others as well so you can right click on the price duplicate and move it to the frost button then you can take the price up here and move it down here and center it like so yeah there we go and then you can duplicate it again right click duplicate move it to the fire button and just move it down here like so and then make sure that it's kind of centered as good as you can you can always adjust these by taking these and making them a little larger if you want to and then duplicate one more time and move it to the poison button Remember to move it in the hierarchy and move it in the actual scene as well. There we go. Now I can see the two lower ones a bit of size because they go exactly to the edge of this. So we need to do the same with the frost button. It's not totally at the edge. Now it is. Now it is. And the same goes for the storm button here. Now it is. And there it is. Okay. So now we have the prices. So when you maximize, you should be able to see a price on all these um, these buttons over here. And you can always change the outline. You can move the outline. You can move the shadow and, and all these things and play around. Maybe you don't want it bold. Maybe you want it like, to be normal size and everything. You can always set it, set it, set it exactly as you want it. Okay, so that's uh, the visual part. Now we'll need to write some scripts that actually uses this currency and that sets the currency from the script instead of us just writing it out here uh, on the text here because we need an actual value in our game. So let's open up our script, find the scripts and find the tower button because we need to add a, a price to the script so that we can set it from um, the actual script here. So let's see, we have a lot of fields in here. So we'll have to create a new price. So we can simply just write private int price. So this is going to be our price. And let's just be able to set it from our um, our inspector here. So it makes it easier for us. So this is the price and this is how much the tower is going to cost. We will have to set the text. Um, so underneath you write, write private text and right click quick actions using unity engine.ui. You should be familiar with this, with this now. If you can't do that, then just go up and write using Unity Engine dot UI, and you can see it's not used right now, but it will be in a few seconds. Text, um, let's call it price text. There we go. So now you can see it lights up up here because we're actually using it for something. Okay, we need a reference to the text, so we are also going to refer uh, reference. Yeah, we're going to serialize this field. And when you save that and jump back into Unity, then you'll see that each button now has a um, has a price text on it as a component or as, a, as an option here. So each button needs its own price. Um, we can set it like this, or we could also script it so that we actually just find the first child and put it as a, um, what's it called, as a um, reference. But let's just do it the easy way here by dropping everything like this taking the storm button, selecting it, taking the price on the storm button, dragging it here, doing the exact same thing for the next button. Sorry, click the button and take the text and move it to the text field. I know you can't see these, but it's exactly the same thing as I did for the first one. So when you have taken all of them, 
and put uh, a reference between the button and their price well then we can go back in um, script and we can set this, uh, the the actual text here so the text just needs to be set in start so we can just write private void start go and here we say text uh, price text that's what I call it uh, dot text equals price plus and then that dollar sign I never can hit way I did it okay maybe later we'll have to reach this from somewhere else so we might make it into a property but for now um, let's just do it like this let's see give me one sec yeah we might have to make it into a property later but uh, let's wait for that until we need to upgrade the towers and stuff so for now just just keep it like this so now when we start the game we set that text on the button the text we see right here this text we set it equal to whatever is written in the script here so it will be equal to the price set right here mm -hmm. so every time we on each button we actually set the price for the tower so each button knows how much the tower it can produce costs so we um, delegate the that um, price or price managing from the game manager instead of having it in the game manager and have, having to write tower, uh, storm tower equals that and frost tower equals that. Well, then we just make sure that each button knows what it costs, and then we'll have to make sure to update that price every time we upgrade a tower or every time we lose some uh, some uh, currency or something. We don't have to update the price. We have to check if the price of the tower is larger or equal to the actual amount of money we have. But we will get to that. So let's just set the prices on all towers. Select your poison tower, for example. And these are just the price that I've come up with. Uh, you can use whatever price you want. Poison tower, I will put that at five. We have our fire tower and I put my fire tower at four. Uh, if I could find it down here, four. Put the price at four. Frost, button, uh, frost tower, that's a two. And my storm tower is also a two. So we just have to put the price in each of them. So now you, you'll see, <coughs> see when we play the game, the price doesn't reflect. I forgot to save, I think. Let's see. Let's try to save. And did I even, yeah, I did. So if we run the game again, there we go. So now the prices actually reflect what I um, actually, um, what's it called, what I actually set them to on the script. I can try not to maximize to make you see this. So we have two, two, four, and five. So these prices are now equal to the actual price that is written on each of, of these scripts here, as you can see. Okay. So with that in place, we can start using the currency for something because we can still just click the towers and place them uh, as many as we want without reducing our actual uh, amount of uh, of money here. So please open up your um, your game manager script, and then we need to find the button or not the button the function uh, called pick tower, and we have it right here. So we need to create an if statement around this, just to make sure that we can't execute this code here unless we have enough currency. So we can actually say if our currency, let's just take this one, is larger or equal to the price of the tower button. So right now we can't access the tower button's price if we write tower button here. Dot, we are not able to see the price anywhere. So we need to go to our tower button and we need to find the price. And then we need to right click, quick actions and encapsulate field. And as usual, if you don't have that, just write this code I have highlighted right here. Write public integer price, get, and return the price here. Okay, so now we are returning the actual price we have up here that we're setting, which means that we can go to our game manager and say tower button dot price here. Okay, so this code in here will only be executed if we have enough currency. So far, so good. So let's just uh, try for fun. Let's say that we, our currency from the get-go is two, right? So in start, we set the currency to two, and if we play the game, 
and we try to try to take the what's it called poison tower we are not able to take the poison tower because it's too expensive right and the fire tower the same but the ice tower we are able to take that but we can keep building it because we're never reducing the currency we should also do that of course so let's do that as well so we jump back to the script set this one back to five and then we need to figure out where we need to um what's it called um, buy the tower or so so to say so we have a function here called buy tower and we're using that or that one is executed if you remember uh, when we select a tile and click on the tile so when we click the tile we are actually executing the buy tower function as well and uh, let's see we have tile script here somewhere and if i remember correctly we are executing let's say buy yeah there we go so in the tile script when we click call the place tower function we are executing the buy tower function and the buy tower function was in here in the game manager okay so first of all when we try to buy a tower we also would like to check if the currency is uh, is correct so we make an if statement here just if, if we had some reduction of our money while we were carrying around the tower for example um, then we would like to check up on it before we place it as well so if our currency is larger or equal to clicked button dot price so click button now has a price right this is the price of the button we just clicked let's say that we are playing the game we click the fire tower and we're carrying it around now hand it's worth two right here at least it should be four uh, so when i click a tile in the game let's say i click here right and when i click a tile right there we need to check if we have enough money as well um, yeah just to make sure so our currency minus equal click button dot price so we reduce the currency by the price of the actual button and then we say hover instance dot deactivate and let's see what does deactivate could do it just sits right render and yeah that's fine good so now we are also reducing our currency and remember to use currency with capital c because our currency with capital c does this stuff here okay so that we update the text on the screen as well so let's see we have five we take storm tower place it we have three we take storm tower place it now we have one and now we can't place in more towers let's see we should be able to place one poison tower now there we go so now we have zero gold left or zero money left but it still looks like we can click these towers over here and what i would like to do is to actually make sure that when i ha don't have enough money for a tower i would like to gray it out a little like this so that we can see this one is not highlighted now so i can't buy it okay just to make it easier for the player to see what he can actually buy but I can see that we are running close to 20 minutes now, so we will wait with that implementation until the next video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you like my videos, you are very welcome to share them on your social media accounts. Um, and also, if you have any friends who's inter interested in game development, don't hesitate to share the videos with them as well. Uh, it will, will really, really help me out a lot if you do so. Also, remember to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page, and subscribe to this channel for more videos, of course. Also, remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page and that means that all your support is very important to me because everything I create here is actually based on uh, donations and support from you guys. So you can support me in different ways. You can go and buy one of my projects as a standalone package uh, on the link in the description below or on the bottom link here. Or you can click the top link to go to the Patreon page where you'll be able to download every single project that I've ever created um, and also get all future projects of course and that includes all assets and script and so on. So thank you very much for watching.